with a right, course. And or send it to my senator, one of the two. That's right. That's right. Uh, I was just explaining to my great watchers, my great viewers, who think that sometimes I'm a little hyperbolic, that I'm into entertainment and like to, you know, trip the like fantastic every once in a while, that the left is not so complicated. They will tell you exactly what they're going to do, and they will set their mind to doing it at whatever means necessary, including in the middle of downtown Washington, D.C., trying to take down the Andrew Jackson Monument Memorial uh, with the police watching. They, they show no fear whatsoever. They have on their mind what they're going to do, and they won't be stopped until they do it. What say you, sir? I, I preface everything that I've said, or that I will say, I should say, uh, with the fact that we had some bad news last Thursday with some of our dogs. We've lost three dogs in about five months. Oh. And I don't have kids. Some people know that. Some people don't. My wife doesn't have kids. Um, so they were kind of like that to us. There's been a lot of heavy reflection on our part for 2020. And at this point, with everything that's been going on, basically we concluded that we absolutely despise 2020. So for this segment, I have to be honest you're probably not going to hear a lot of positivism from me. I'm just not in that mindset right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, this country is in... Well, let, let me go. I will actually answer your question and not di try to divert. You asked, what is it about the leftists that's going on right now? And... You said, when they tell you something, you do now need to take them at their word. Now, perhaps five years ago, that wouldn't have been so true. But within the past year and a half, two years, and, and I would say since 2016, since the election of Donald Trump, I equate Democrats and the leftists and the American media maggots to Islam. Yeah. Um, they are the Borg. You will be assimilated. Resistance is futile. Uh, and, and you have to take them because for the longest time, people in the West wouldn't listen to what Islam was telling you. They didn't believe the words that were coming out of the mouth of Islam. And I had a phrase for that. It was Islam is as Islam does. And what I mean by that was the Quran, it doesn't really matter much about what the Quran says. It doesn't matter much about what the Hadith says because I have read both. Mm -hmm. But the Hadith more so. And when Islam tells you they mean to kill you, especially after 2001, we still didn't get that message. We weren't receiving that message for many, many years, but now, in my opinion, the LDAM has proved itself to be the worst of Islam possible in terms of what they say is truly what they mean. You know, Ken, you and I both recall that, I don't know, maybe you have a better recollection than I, I don't know, let's say five years ago, six years ago, four years ago, about that time. Yeah. Democrats were hedging their bets. They were saying, we're not coming for your guns. Oh, gosh, no. We just want some common sense limitations on the Second Amendment. But all oh, those people that are overreacting, saying that there would be death panels, and it turns out there were death panels. <laughs> and then we're not coming for your guns. And then it turns out, yeah, they are, that's exactly what they want. They want Australian gun confiscation in, since 1996. So you really do have to take them at the word because they're done hedging their bets. Mm -hmm. there, there is no minimization of what it is that they're looking for. Now, that's, that's the Democrats. We're pushing them off to one side right now because...
because we're dealing with an entirely separate and different animal right now. And those elements of BLM and Antifa and anarchists and the people that are taking part in part of the protests, all of the looting, they are animals. Make no mistake. They are here to destroy the United States of America. And now the Democrats are with them complicit in that ride. They want to take that journey as well. The other thing that I find absolutely despicable, and I think that's the appropriate word, despicable, is that those members of top administrations of various forms of law enforcement all throughout the United States uh, who pissed on all over my oath yeah, and who despicably refused to honor theirs who laid down and washed the feet of animals they're going to get what they deserve they are going to get in some major fashion defunded but the interesting point is like everything that goes along with the leftist democrats and the american media maggots and like i said i mentioned the law enforcement i'll also mention the republicans also way, way too many republicans are in league with too many elements of this but yep. everyone that has said now that this is what they want they're pulling no punches there is no equivocation there's no well you know i didn't exactly know they what they're saying is exactly what they believe and exactly what they want I'm going to have a show tomorrow night with a guy named Jack Alexander from Australia. We're going to be debating about Seattle. And the question about Seattle is going to be, what are you going to do about Seattle? Do you let it fold and destroy itself, or do you send in the National Guard? I can tell you right, right now, my response to that is, let it fold. Let it burn. Mm-hmm. Let it smolder. Let those people die. Maybe this is a result of all the bad things that have occurred to me in the past week, but I'm I'm telling you true, folks. I am truly convinced that in order for America to heal, and and Tim, I'm not even sure if it's going to heal. Yeah. But I can tell you this, lots of people are going to die. In the span of a week, one week, since the idea of defund the police has come to fruition, or at least they're talking about it openly in departments all across the U.S., just from floating the idea, we're seeing in oh, in Father's Day, we saw 40, what was it, 30 or 40 people killed just in Chicago. Great, great mayor, Mayor Lightfoot. Um <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, and and all sorts of people, almost a hundred people shot. A hundred and two, I believe, a five-year-old, a three-year-old. And I saw a mother, a black mother, on TV today, and I thought, as soon as as soon as these words escaped her lips, oh my gosh, they're going to come and firebomb her house. She said, "Oh my, what about all these black lives that other blacks don't seem to care about, and we're all."
you need to be there. And my response was, yeah, that's funny. My oath didn't include a complete outright advocacy for uh, the assassination, poisoning, and burning of law enforcement officers. And if you think that you're going to get away with treating human beings like robots, that's not going to occur. And in my estimation, people have gotten away with treating law enforcement like robots. Yeah. So if you want a robot, if you want to defund the police, if you don't like the way they operate, then take a big cup of shut the fuck up when they don't show up for work on July 4th, when they don't respond well as, as Seattle PD responded about two nights ago when someone who was shot and killed. Law enforcement decided to respond. They called the paramedics. Protesters met them at the borders of Chaz Shop and said, no, go away. And the police retreated. Yeah. And the paramedics retreated. And when I said that, when I saw that, I had a quote from Chief Dan George go through my brain housing group at the time, and it said, my heart soars like an eagle when I see this. This, folks, America needs to bleed. There are going to be deaths, and there need to be consequences. And the consequence is, if you're stupid enough to vote for all of this shit, then you're going to have to live with all the consequences. Well, I didn't know people were going to get hurt. Then you're really that stupid. Again, see my previous statement. Yeah. This shit has consequences. People are going to get hurt, and people are going to get killed. And if you were stupid enough... To go along with the American media maggots and the leftists and the Democrats and the anarchists and BLM and Antifa, then you deserve every damn thing you're going to get. I've had it up to here with this stuff. America, you don't understand how things truly function until you've gone the back of beyond. You're about to experience beyond. I can't wait. July 4th, listen to me. NYPD, don't show up. Seattle, don't go in. Because you know what also doesn't happen? Have you heard of staging, Ken? This occurs in every city. When there's some kind of an incident where the paramedics think and the ambulance people and the firefighters think that they're going to get shot, they stage and wait for law enforcement before they go in. There's another reason that people are going to get killed or they're going to die or they're going to bleed out in America's leftist cities. You want this, you love it, you need some more of it. And you're going to get it, people. You're going to get it in spades. I can't wait. There you go. And you know, one of the great things, Biff, is if what you just said, if you were on Fox, you would no longer be on Fox. They would take you completely off the air. This is one of the great things about TEC and TV because you're going to get an honest opinion, great commentary, and it's going to strike you at the very heart of reasonability. It's not going to just happen in New York City from my inside uh, information. What started in New What started in New York? It's on its way to Chicago. It's on its way to Atlanta, especially Atlanta. It's on its oh way to God. Dallas. Yeah, it's, Ken, darn it. How did I miss Atlanta? <laughs> it's, y'all are going to wake up on this 4th of July, and those fireworks may not necessarily be fireworks. I'm just saying. Uh, and that leads us to Colorado, which has taken away the immunity of its police force. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Two things. This, this is an if-then equation. And it's very, it's very simple, it's binary, it's bicameral. If qualified as immunity is removed, well, well there's two, actually there's two if-then equations. The first is, if qualified immunity gets removed, then you're going to see a lot of people not enter law enforcement. Yep. If qualified immunity is removed, then you're going to see officers and individuals have to come up with insurance policies like doctors in order for them to be protected by risk management and their policies are going to have to be written like doctors so that insurance companies will pick up individual officers but the caveat of that is People recognize that we need to have doctors. People are not convinced we need to have cops. So if 
that comes about, then also third if that equation, there's no guarantee that insurance carriers are going to write a policy for law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So if you get into a job worth, I don't know, $39,000, and the risk exposure behind law enforcement is every bit as big in terms of judgments as it is with doctors, then you're going to see policies and riders to the tune of $100,000 a year, like a lot of policies that doctors have to take. So if the agencies that they potentially work for under the removal of qualified immunity say something similar to, well, we're not picking up this risk, that risk is now, that onus is now going to be on you, then you tell me whose duty it is if you're making, let's say, $39,000 a year as a cop, your duty now is to, I don't know, lose $70,000 a year or get a $100,000 loan just to be a cop? Not going to happen. Absolutely not going to happen. Mm -hmm. This will happen. Once this policy has been floated, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in Colorado, it did pass. Confirm that for me, Ken. Yeah, you're correct. You're absolutely I correct. I believe it did. Yeah. So you see, this idea, once floated there, is going to migrate all across the fruited plain into other major law enforcement venues. When it's picked up by all these law enforcement agencies, then you're going to see current law enforcement officers frozen out of the job because insurance carriers are not writing policies for cops yet and if they do they also have to decide it's a it's a risk versus gain factor to them can we can i can if i just someone gets subject to a suit is the money that they're going to expend in a suit worth writing a policy for that officer here's another if then equation because yep. If people see that officers are sued individually and they're successful, the floodgates are open and all the cops are going to get sued for just about everything. Because once you get a win over there, they all want to win someplace else. Yep. You want to drive cops out? You want to defund the police? No, that's not going to happen. If this occurs, what's going to happen is the, the, the police are going to defund your ass. <laughs> And, and let me tell you another thing, folks. I've been, I live on all the forums in social media of Compton. Up until about two weeks ago, ladies and gentlemen of America, you had cops with you. I don't know one cop that said anything similar to, well, you know, what, what happened to Floyd. Uh, that guy really deserved it. I haven't heard one cop say that or even remotely hit a hint at it. All the cops that I know, talk to, look at, read, have all said, that's a bad thing that should never happen again. And we're with you. There are some things that need to be redone. We're all along, we're all along with that. We want more training. We want more attention to pay down, to be paid on that. Although... In reality, the truth is, when you defund the cops, the very first thing that gets cut is training. Just that I tell you that. Yep. You had the cops, America, up about until about two weeks ago. Once you target the cops for assassination, and then you're talking about defunding them, you're talking about removing their protection from suits, and you're talking about poisoning them, assassinating them, ambushing them, burning them, setting them on fire, shooting them in these riots now they can't protect themselves now they're facing murder charges for defending themselves even though a taser is only a deadly weapon when a particular da says it is and it isn't when it isn't what the hell same guy now you've turned law enforcement <laughs> against you they were for you america you keep on with this silly shit now they're not with you guaranteed mm -hmm. so you want more of this, folks? You want more of this, America? You're going to get it. Because these guys can all go out. By the way, and if, if you're wondering, people in leftist cities, some of them, not many, like me, because I'm just a dick, <laughs> but a lot, of, a lot of folks, some folks, are like me. I want to tell you one thing about most cops, though. They are all armed. They're mm -hmm. all very well armed. So in terms of being able to defend their families, they are. And they will. Yep. And if you force them into a position where they no longer care about you, 
They're going to kick you to the curb because they're going to treat you exactly as you treat them. Mm -hmm. They're humans. They're not robots. Oh, America, you don't know what you've started. You don't know what kind of a door you've opened. You don't know that when you pull open that box, Pandora is really staring back at you right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, this has not yet started. Pop the popcorn, Ken. It's going to be delicious. It's on like Donkey Kong. And what I can't understand is Pandora is looking at you saying, why the hell did you open this box? Did you see the sign? <laughs> you well, the sign was there. The sign was there. But like Islam, they're telling you exactly what they want. Well, leftists are telling you exactly what they want. Exactly. Democrats are telling you exactly what, what you want. I am the most disillusioned with law enforcement and the Republicans than I ever have been in my meager, paltry little life. Mm -hmm. Many of them, law enforcement administrators, some of the Indians... But not all of them by any stretch of the imagination. They're despicable. Yeah. Where are the people screaming? I said that in my show last week. I said, Mayor, excuse me, Chief Carmen Best, if she had an ounce of morality within her, yep. she's the chief of police of Seattle. Yep. She would have rallied her troops at the very beginning of Chaz Chop whatever the hell they're calling it now, and saying, we are not abandoning our station. Yep. Mayor, whatever the hell your name is, Durkin, you can go to hell. We're not abandoning this station. And furthermore, we're not turning any portion of the city over to anybody. Or even if she was forced to, she should have had second thoughts and said, you know what, once our cops abandoned this, and these assholes put up barriers, I'm done. I'm coordinating all, coordinating all of our cops, and I don't care how much blood has to be shed, we're taking this back. Because roughly 30,000 people who are held hostage in Chaz Chop, in Seattle, they pay their taxes. None of these fuckers outside that have come in, they don't pay taxes. Yep. So the people that are being held hostage are the ones that are funding all of this stuff. It's this is damn this is insanity writ large. It, it is. I want to die. Are finally saying, you I, know what? <laughs> if you don't want us to over police, as a matter of fact, you don't even want us here. You're not far from getting your wish, because after three or four years of being told that you uh, you over police, you know, after hitting our head with a hammer, we're finally getting the message. You really do mean what you say. You really thank you. Exactly. I also want to say this. For those of you following along at home and don't realize that 41% of African American small businesses have been wiped out thanks to the reaction, not COVID-19, the reaction by governors and mayors to close their businesses down. 41% are eliminated, unlikely to ever come back online, devastated economically. The biggest devastation that you can do to your city right now economically is to defund a cop and to take away their immunity. Because what's going to happen is the premium dollars for an immunity insurance policy in Washington, D.C. will be, it would be like paying for the Rose Bowl experience versus someone in Downey Falls, Pennsylvania. You understand? Where those individuals are, you're going to have a red line factoring that comes about. And you will have a separate but equal law enforcement system. And once you have that, ladies and gentlemen, you're done. It's over. You might as well bring in all the forces of military at that point. Because it's, it's not going to work where one group of people are going to be treated differently than the other by the police or that private police have better roles than public police. If anybody watched Warlock, the movie over the weekend on TEC and TV, you saw exactly what happens in that debate regarding public and private police force. It ain't going to work. None of it ever works. You say, sir. But it's coming. There you it's go. absolutely going to be coming. Number one, 
as compared to public service, soon private policing is going to pay better, they're going to have better benefits, and they're going to have better working conditions. Because what could be a better working condition than working and guarding behind a gated community? Woo! You don't have to deal with the day to day calls, you don't have to take uh, anywhere from 30 to 40 calls a night and wonder if the very next call that you get is going to be either the ruination of your career, the ruination of your family, or where you're going to get shot, or people that say that, you know what, if you get pulled out of your car and thumped until you're half dead, no one is going to come to save you. Mm-hmm. So, you want private police? Yeah, you're going to get that. Here's the other just juicy, glorious aspect that nobody thinks about, Ken. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to find your gene pool of the next cops? The question for backgrounding will be this. When did you, did you smoke crack just before you came in here? Because if you smoked it within five minutes, we won't consider you. If you smoked crack, because the crack won't smoke itself, 15 minutes ago, yeah, you're a candidate we're, we're looking for. So just amaze, just imagine the worst of the worst people attempting to take a job that five-year-olds would be able to tell you, look, no adult would actually take a job in conditions like that. Yeah. No one aspires to be shot at and poisoned and stabbed and set on fire and beaten and to have the ability to defend themselves completely removed. In Seattle, for example, all of the other tools that were in the toolkit of cops are now gone. Do you know what cops have to defend themselves now? What's that? That would, that would be batons and guns. Wow. Let me see. If you come and somebody runs at you with a knife, we're going 18s, 1800s Wild West. Come at me with a knife. Bang. Start mm -hmm. to assault me. Bang. Mm -hmm. Decide that you're going to try to beat me up. Bang. Mm -hmm. All these other little tools that you took away from the cops, the only thing that's left is, because they're not going to go fisticuffs with you, mm -mm. the only thing left is, bang. You yep. want it? You love it? You want some more of it? You're going to get it. Wow. Was it worth was it worth voting for Muriel Bowser? Was it worth voting for Lori Lightfoot? Was it worth voting for any of these leftists at this particular juncture? Bottom line is that they've already thrown you to the wolves, American citizen, American voter. That's it. You're on your own. How do you deal with on your own? Well, if you live in a leftist society, you don't have a right to a gun. Only the criminals do. So guess what? You're you're sucked at this point. You're on your own. Mayor Lightfoot in Chicago has told the citizens in Chicago, you don't have a right, you shouldn't be defending yourself with a gun. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Again, a five year old can go to heyjackass.com and go and see all the daily updated stats about how many people are dying in Chicago. And guess who isn't dying in Chicago? It's not all the whites you want to kill. Thank you. The people that are dying in Chicago are apparently all the blacks that all the other blacks want to kill. So this past Father's Day weekend, in honor of Father Day, Father's Day, I guess the young war-age males decided to make war on the other war-age males, and they had one of the deadliest weekends in recent history. Just considering, Ken, two weeks ago, they had the deadliest shooting and deaths in 60 years in Chicago, and they're competing now to see who makes it worse. And wait a minute, who's this George Floyd guy? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I heard he was a boxer. He was a boxer. He was did, what door guy? He, I heard he was a Confederate general, and they took his statue down. They probably so did. Heard, well, hell, it deserved to come down anyway. Damn <laughs> that George Floyd. I, and my my thing is, some of the most peaceable, loving people in the world have licensed mob rule in America, and have given up to the whole idea because it's racially assuring uh, and it looks like it's a modern answer to an ancient problem. 
And the truth of the matter is that we've aligned ourselves to a conventional overthrow without a gun, without any firing, into communism. And so I want to ask you this question here, sir, because there are those who are listening to me and watching me at home, and they're saying, Ken, you're just over the top at this point. Uh, oh, listeners <laughs> and viewers of Ken, you better take Ken at his word. They said today, Sean Talcum X King uh, made mention of the fact that what he thinks should happen. Oh yeah, he said all murals and stained glass windows of white Jesus and his European mother and their white friends should also come down. They are a gross form of white supremacy created as tools of oppression, racist propaganda. They should all co they should all come down. Hey, I wonder what what BZ's response was. And it went something like this. Uh. Oh, I'm sorry. That's that's true. That's that's what he said. But but uh, the funny thing is, I also responded to that, and I said, "This is where it's going, America." Thank you. Hey, the woke child mob, uh, the BLM, Antifa, Democrats, Gauks, black activists, anarchists, and even some Republicans—they are coming for the caucasoids. <laughs> Plus. They're coming for your religion, no matter what it is, except Islam, because Islam will Thank you. you. They're coming for your culture. They're coming for your history. They're coming for your freedoms. They're coming for your rule of law. They're coming for your very nation. Ignore all of that at your own peril, because if you do ignore it, guess what? They're coming for your neighborhoods, and then ultimately, they're coming for you. Hey, folks. Do yourself a bit of edification. I know Ken knows this. But do yourself a favor and look up and, and ask yourself, hey, what's that funny quote by some some little know-nothing dude named Pastor Niemöller? Become acquainted with that saying. And then get back to Ken. There you go. I wasn't a fascist. I wasn't this. I wasn't that. I wasn't the other. And then they came for me. And ladies and gentlemen, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, they have nothing to lose here. They got $100 million from, you know, Jordan. They got nothing to lose. They are actually going to come, and they're telling you right now, we're going to start burning churches. We're going to start breaking the windows out of churches. We're going to start desecrating churches. And I know that there are people that are watching night saying, Ken, they're not, they wouldn't dare do that. Just like I will put this out there. It's kind of funny that a lynching rope shows up at Bubba Wallace's garage where there's maximum security as a result of changes to the Confederate flag. All of a sudden, there is a lynching rope in Bubba Wallace's garage. I'm just saying Chicago. That's all I'm saying. That's my opinion. There was a little tag attached to it, and it said, copy one each, made in China. This is the official Jussie Smollett commemorative rope. There you go. <laughs> How can a group... quotation, folks. Mm-hmm. gentlemen the left has turned its guns on you it's a matter of time it's a matter of days and Sean King Talcum X has made it explicitly clear he's made it yes you can that's his nickname that's his nickname in black America it's Talcum X <laughs> but there you go because quite frankly Talcum X warned that there would be riots after COVID-19. And I also told you that there would be riots after COVID-19. 
And when you got 42 million Americans who are unemployed, you got a lot of people sitting on the sidelines with nothing to do. You got the formula for discontent and chaos right there, right between your eyes. Watch. I'm going to tell you without a shadow of a doubt, Bubba Wallace's garage had cameras in it. How do you not know by now who did it? So, it, like all the other garages for NASCAR, because no one wants to steal anyone else's car design and win a race. So they have they have uh, cameras in there. I don't know how you not know. And if it comes out that Bubba Wallace's people were involved, you're going to have some real issues with NASCAR coming back from the Confederate side of the aisle. Just saying. Just saying. Um, Mark, you're awesome, man. And I'm very sorry that you lost your dogs. I, oh. I got to tell you this, and I think people already know it, and I know you already know this. You are my brother. Yep. And we help each other out. And I am ever so glad that I met you in 2016. Likewise. And, and we, our melanin count is not the same. And I know that shocks everyone. <laughs> but we are brothers in unity in terms of believing that God gives us all of our rights, not the government. Yep. The government doesn't give us a thing. The government exists to take away. So Ken and I are brothers in unity in terms of philosophy and conservatism. And anyone that wants to join, you're always welcome to, to come aboard. Melanin count, or as I think it was Lonnie used to say, paint job, paint job. is immaterial. Yep. Couldn't care less about people's paint job. All I care about is, are you a good person? Are you conservative? Are you interested in, in seeing the greatest country in the history of the planet destroyed or saved? Those are easy questions. Yes, they are. I know where Ken stands, and I know where I stand. There you go. Biff Zappi. Also, want to just very quickly, uh, because I, I really believe that we reached that point of insurrection on the streets. Uh, a lot of people say that's uh, I've gone too far in saying that, but I don't think so. I'm, I'm watching it happen here in Washington, D.C. And it's endorsed and sponsored by the state, Muriel Bowser. Should the average American pick up the phone or go down to their gun shop tomorrow morning, uh, since they're not welcome at Walmart anymore, and put in their application to buy a gun to protect their family? That's all regional. Everything is regional. But let me tell you the truth. The truth is, if you happen to be living in a leftist urban rat cage, or if you're in a leftist town, leftist city, leftist county, leftist state, your ability to defend yourself, um, I feel sorry for you. Yeah. Because, no, you're not going to be able to waltz into a gun store and begin the paperwork. If you're lucky enough to live in an area where if you go to, I don't know, maybe another city or maybe another county in the same state in which you live, maybe there are differences in the jurisdiction. Generally, they're pretty much all the same in the state. So those who live in leftist states, you're going to be left defenseless. If you're not already armed in some fashion, you can go to your friendly neighborhood gun store and give it a try. You let me know how successful you are. <laughs> you'll, you'll be filling out forms for the rest of your life. I assure you, yet you will. And on, on page 423 at the very end where you sign your name, then they also come up with a big red stamp and go bonk, and it says no. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't fill out page 399 and initial it. You didn't yeah. do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're going to have to start all over. We love you, Biff. God bless you, man. And God yours. Bless you, Ken. Folks, listen to what Ken says. Thank you. Thank you very much. Biff Zappi with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you right now, we support Braun Nails, and Braun Nails supports us. And I'm going to tell you without a shadow of a doubt, that if you didn't get your father a gift card at our site, uh, that it might be a good time to buy your father, your mother, your cousin, your sister, your brother uh, a gift card and encourage them to get the training that they need to either have a concealed carry license or to have a gun in their home. We have reached that point in America, ladies and gentlemen, 
where you might have the favor of a militia eventually, but at the very last of it all, you're the last person who could defend your home. I'm going to tell you right now, go to Braun Nails, get a gift card for your family, for your friends, uh, or whatever you do when you come to TECN TV, put in your order and your application to purchase a gun to protect your family. All I'm going to say to you, if Talcum X tells you that they're going to start burning churches, you need to do what's best for you. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, with more of the best in urban conservative talk. We are not a mob. We are a republic. And as such, when you watch us, you're watching the best in urban conservative news, talk, and movies. The Exceptional Conservative Show .com. I am not lying to you people. I am not lying to you. Look into my eyes. Even those people who say I'm against having a gun. Look into my eyes. Time is now.